is Julia Gugiati from ICTP, who will talk about hypergeometric landau ginsberg models of anti-canonical log on Hudson Hi, uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you much for the introduction. So what I want to talk about today uh, is um, a story about um, mirror symmetry for kind of varieties that are not covered by the standard construction, and especially about this family of the uh, fact of inside this way to protect the space, where K here is a positive behavior. Okay, so um, let me say first that this is not a random series of surfaces, but uh, in 2001, uh, Johnson and Collard classified uh, all uh, uh, anti canonica uh, quasi smooth uh, and well formed uh, log defects. So, uh, X in weighted projective free space. Uh, so let me say anti canonical means that minus k of x is uh, OX1. Quasi uh, smooth and well form is technical language to say that they are R before, and also the stacky log is also dimension greater than two. So in this case, that's fine. Log means that I have equally quotient regularity in this case, and then that suggests that the anti canonical class is down. Okay, and they find that uh, we have only this period for each case and other 22 for other cases. So in a way, this period cover all uh, uh, a bunch of the classification of log delta. Okay, so why do I want to talk about this? Uh, as I said, uh, the reason is that they are kind of exotic in mirror symmetry. So the plan of the talk, I will uh, start by recalling the context of mirror symmetry we're working on. Then I will explain how hypergeometric give a way to attack mirror symmetry for cases like this. So I will talk about odd mirror symmetry. And then I will uh, start talking about homological mirror symmetry for this person. Okay. So let me start from one. So when I talk about mirror symmetry for fun, in general, I I speak about the correspondence that is on one side a funnel orbital x of dimension n, and on the other side an LG mod uh, y w, which uh, of the same dimension, which for me here is just a non compact complex manifold with some additional structure together with an holomorphic function. So, in a way, I can think of this as a, a one parameter family of uh, n minus one dimensional variety. So this correspondence at the level of odd theory, as uh, was mentioned in different talks, is uh, an identity of period. Here one takes the regularized quantum period of the funnel, which is a generating function for the multi invariance. And here we have uh, a classical period of the LG model. Uh, so in this period actually satisfy differential equations. So another way to say this is uh, asking for an equality between local system. In here uh, we have a local system that comes from uh, the quantum of E. And uh, what we're asking is that this actually is geometric and uh, arises as a sub portion of uh, the local system that gives uh, the variation of the cohomology on this side. Okay. So this is odd mirror symmetry, but we also have uh, an homological version, which uh, in this case, uh, one formulation would ask for an equivalence between uh, the derived category of coherent sheep that we have on this side and some analog of the Fukaya category for a simplex regression. Okay, this was just to remind people in the audience. So, um, this is the picture of mirror symmetry, but what's actually known uh, and concretely understood is what happens for uh, Fano, which have uh, an effective anti canonical divisor. Uh, for instance, the Fano search program 
would, uh, would start from uh, a funnel and uh, would need uh, uh, certain toric degeneration, which uh, you can actually have uh, uh, only if uh, the linear system of minus k is uh, not empty. So what happens is that, and also as we saw in some talks yesterday, we would have the heuristics in homological mirror symmetry that tells us what uh, the anti-canonical divisor would correspond to in terms of the smooth divisor here. So what happens if this minus k of x is actually empty? Uh, we do not know what to do in mirror symmetry, and this can happen also in simple cases like uh, complete intersection in weighted projective cases which are anti-canonical in the sense I said uh, in the beginning. And for instance, if I have all the ways AI that are bigger than one, and I am anti-canonical, then minus K of X uh, is OX1, and as a linear system will be just uh, the empty linear system. Because our basis of uh, uh, sections for minus K of X is given by weighted monomials of degree one, in the variables, but if all the variables are greater than one, then uh, the linear system is empty. Okay, and if you look at the series I brought down in the beginning, we are exactly in this case because uh, all the weights here are bigger than one, and I am anti canonical. Okay, okay. So are there questions so far? Or is everything okay? okay. So, um, so in cases like this one, uh, what I want to say is that uh, uh, a way to attack this problem is actually to, to observe that at least conjecturally, but it has been proven in some cases, the quantum period that appears here is an hypergeometric function. Uh, so the associated local, local system is an hypergeometric local system. So what happens with hypergeometric local system? We saw many, many talks about them for now. And they have a special property of being motivic, uh, meaning that they arise from, uh, from the variations of uh, the cohomology groups uh, of the fibers of a morphism. And specifically for uh, local systems that are uh, hypergeometric and defined over Q, we have a candidate geometric realization, which is uh, the so-called GKZ model. So this is um, a family of um, hypersurfaces uh, in a torus that are constructed just combinatorially out of uh, the hypergeometric data. And uh, okay, this is a story about hypergeometric, but if we specialize this to the hypergeometric local system arising from a funnel, we would get uh, an LG model, which uh, is the one given by the GKZ model. And the expectation is an identification between this local system and the variation, let's call the dimension of T, of uh, the pure P, uh, the middle pure P in the in this shift here. But so if you look at our definition that we have there of mirror symmetry, this looks uh, like a mirror for us, but the problem is that it has the wrong dimension. So what's next right here is to ask, uh, well, can I extract from this LG model another one, which now has the right dimension so this would give us indeed, uh, like uh, this LG model must have the property that this variation is, uh, let's say, a sub portion of uh, this other variation. And if we could find something like that, then this would be a mirror of the right dimension. Okay, uh, in general, let me say that uh, for a complete intersection like that, if the dimension is n and the dimension is t, this is dimension n plus two t. So we would need to reduce dimension n. Okay. And this is the general idea that one can use to construct mirrors for funnel without uh, effective anti canonical. 
And what I want to do in part two is to say what we get uh, for this specific case. Please stop me if you have uh, questions or things are not clear. This is a sort of a story. I'm not giving too much. Time. Okay. So, yeah. So this local system have a monodromy that is generated by matrices. And yeah, you can uh, uh, write them out combinatorial list of the hypergeometric uh, monodromy. Yeah. Uh, so those are, um, they have uh, cyclic quotient similarities because by asking that they are quasi smooth, I'm asking that the only similarities that they have are the ones that are inherited by the action of the star that defines the productive basis. And specifically, this one have similarities that are strictly log terminal, so non canonical. They have discrepancy bigger than minus one, but uh, non canonical. Okay. So, okay, so if you apply this reasoning to this case and keep things safe, uh, what we get is a local system of uh, rank uh, 6k plus 2 and weight 1. So we do expect a uh, pencil of curves as a mirror in the sense of the definition. But uh, this uh, GKZ model would give uh, a fourfold over C. So, in other words, a pencil of threefold. And uh, okay, where did I go? And the theorem I have uh, with the uh, electric is uh, that uh, indeed there exists uh, uh, a surface which uh, has this shape. Where well, my superpotential here is just the projection to the variable T. And uh, we do prove that uh, this, um, I didn't say what delta is complicated, but now I'm going to say something about it. And we find a period of this family, which is uh, indeed the so-called I function of, uh, of our function. So uh, the, the point to construct this is exactly to extract it from uh, this uh, GKZ model. And uh, uh, maybe I'm going to say some words about it, but let me first notice that uh, if I fix T, what this is uh, is uh, an hyperelliptic curve because of the expression. So this is a pencil of hyperelliptic curve. And it's a pencil of genus uh, 3K plus 1. And because indeed the variation of cohomology must match uh, the local system that comes from the bottom. And what will be strange about this is the mass W that we find is not a Laurent polynomial. So the dependency of the variable on the variable T is higher. So it's really out of the usual uh, kind of picture. Okay. Okay. So the way to construct this is indeed to find an LG model which uh, uh, for each T realizes uh, the following uh, equality of odd structure. And uh, it's really done in the case, uh, in the way we did it in this paper by analyzing the geometry of this triple. So just to give an idea, uh, these three folds here, as I said before, are hypersurfaces in Torai. And what we do is uh, to run a minimal model program that constructs uh, a partial compactification of those. When you have this partial compactification, actually you are, you are happy because uh, the third piece in the H3 of the compactification is the same as the one I started from. So I can consider this in the same way for my goal. But this one has uh, on it, uh, the structure of uh, Adelfat's vibration. So actually, instead of studying this group here, I can study uh, through a array spectral sequence only the H1 over the base, which is a star, with, with coefficient in this shift here, because I am funnel, so the other contribution would disappear. And now when you have this, what you really need to study is this local system for the vibration. But uh, what is this local system? This is the local system whose stock at a point uh, X is uh, uh, the H2 of the fiber, which I will denote here just like this because it's over a point X, 
quick few thank you. But again, in time panel, this is just uh, the typical group of the fiber. So once I understand the typical group of the fiber, I would be happy because I would understand uh, this local system. And uh, the typical group that we have here is nice because if you look at the split equation of uh, the Zeltat surface, you find that the Picar group has a uh, rank two. And I have two distinguished uh, generators, P plus and, mi and minus, that depend on a polynomial delta in the variable P and X. So now if I construct uh, a two to one cover of this uh, P with variable X, which is given by that polynomial there. Sorry, I changed the variable. This uh, two to one cover would be really a parameterization of the Picard group that I have here. In other words, I would have uh, an isomorphism between uh, the local system that I get on C star given by this map and uh, the R2 five star Q that I had there. But then here I'm happy because instead of considering this uh, cohomology group, now through this isomorphism, I can consider this one, which is really just uh, the cohomology of the curve I construct. Okay, but this is a really explicit and uh, ad hoc analysis in this case. So one has to find ways to generalize it if we want to study this problem for every completing the text. Okay, so now uh, we do have mirrors for those and they are strange because they they are not Laurent polynomials and also they are not uh, left side vibrations because they are hypergeometric with a very weird fiber over zero. So one can ask, okay, we did construct odd mirrors for this, but can we actually also prove homological mirror symmetry for those? Can we study the categories that we have uh, in this context? Okay, so I'm gonna do that now if I manage to erase the board. But if you have questions about this part, please uh, ask me. The natural base of that is the one. Yeah, because you have an hypersomatic family uh, which comes from an hypersomatic body. So you, you do have a complex variable. You can see it as a, a differential equation over P1 with three singular singularities that you can normalize with zero, one, and infinity. No, well, yes, if you want a local system, yes, because on P1, you would, uh, you're not a local system, you would, uh, you would have uh, three singularities, right? Okay? Uh, not in this case, no. Yeah, uh, but if you if you do study this problem for a complete intersection in toric varieties, though, not just uh, in a way to that space, then you would have a, a DKZ family over uh, multivariable torus. So in that case, it would be more complicated. Yeah. Okay, so it's fine. Okay, Uh, you, what do you mean by higher dimension? Uh, no, I think it would work. Just uh, either you find a general strategy or you do it case by case, which is a bit annoying because uh, you know every case you have to study the geometry of the GKD model that you have. Uh, but uh, actually, I do have now some techniques for which, uh, from the polytope of the from the combinatorial data and from the polytope of the GKT variety, you can actually read off already what it will be if this quality of a lower width. So for width one, it would be a blow up along some completing the section of something, or for width two, it would be something like your quadric bundle. So you already have a geometric structure that comes immediately from the community. But in general, it's a bit difficult. Yeah.
Yeah, 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 yeah. In this case, you have an hypergeometric function and you just write down the hypergeometric ODEs that that satisfies and it's the same that the theory satisfies. The same, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, okay, you had the uh, X, 8K plus 4 inside the weighted geodesic space, and you just take uh, the generated function to factor, uh, whose uh, entries are the factorial ratio with 8K plus 4 at the numerator and 1, and at the denominator, you have 2 to K plus 1. So it's really like a factorial ratio coming from the degree and the weights. Okay. Okay, just to be sure how much time do I have? Okay. Okay, okay. I will uh, say something. Okay, so now we want to study homological mirror symmetry for this family. Uh, also because uh, my, my final goal uh, would be to understand what happens in this case, uh, about all the heuristics that I have about the anti-canonical divisor. And also, uh, as I mentioned, but I will say later, my vibration that, that I have in this case is not flexed, so I don't know which category to put on the A side. Okay, so, so what we want is uh, some equivalent like this, where in general one here consider the derived category of uh, Lagrange and vanishing point. Okay. So let's say that uh, we have problems on both sides in this case, because uh, our surface is here that we had to start with, where, so they are not toric and they're not, uh, uh, they are uh, hyper surfaces in a wavy projective space. So I could consider the exceptional collection that comes from here, but this would not be full here. I would have a residual category. So it's not clear how to like explicitly describe this. And uh, and here is even less clear because my pencil of uh, hyperelliptic curve uh, has uh, three singular fibers as every hypergeometric. But uh, first of all, this space is singular. I have uh, uh, in Arden classification a e six two k plus one plus one singularity at the point uh, zero zero zero, and also the fiber over zero is. Uh, is a cusp passing through this one. The other fiber over C is nodal, so I'm fine. So I don't know how which category should I consider here because this is not defined in tidal um, work. Okay, so what we did until now is uh, to study the B side of this, and uh, with the uh, rota, we find a description of this category. And this is a uh, uh, work in progress with uh, rota and Apperman. And hopefully, I will have. Uh, Two minutes to start. So I start from here and I will give the description of the category that we take. So, um, so our main theorem. So in here I will denote as curly X the stack associated to the surface and by X the surface as singular surface. So in this formulation of mirror symmetry, it is important to consider this as a stack and not as a singular variety. So the, the object I need to study here is really the derived category of X as a stack. Okay. And what we get is that uh, for each K, the derived category that I have here admits uh, uh, full exceptional collection, which are given uh, by uh, 10 plus 12 K object 
for each case. And we manage also to, to describe them explicitly. So the main, um, the starting point that we use to, to prove this theorem is uh, the derived uh, GL to C uh, McKay correspondence in the cyclic case. Uh, as given by uh, Ishii and Ueda in uh, 2015. So this correspondence says that if I have F a surface uh, with the uh, cyclic quotient in the radicus, I can consider uh, its minimal resolution and uh, also the canonical stack associated to it. And what, uh, what they prove is that there is a, a fully faithful functor phi that embeds the direct category of the minimal resolution into the one of the class. And moreover, there is a semi orthogonal decomposition that uh, gives the direct category of the stack as uh, an exceptional collection. And then the image through this functor of the derived category of the minimal resolution. Okay, so in general, when you have uh, the SL2 McKay correspondence, you would have that these two derived categories are equivalent. But in this case, since the singularity, as uh, Ule was uh, mentioned before, are, are different, so they are log terminal. Uh, so the group is not uh, SL2, but GL2. And so I do not have an equivalence between these two categories, but just an embedding. And I have a piece that comes, uh, an exceptional collection that comes from the singularity of my variety. So um, these results already tells us that uh, since log del petty surfaces are rational, I will have overall a full exceptional collection because here I will have a full exceptional collection and these are exceptional objects. But if we need the, uh, an explicit description, especially for homological mirror symmetry, we do need to understand what the minimal resolution of F is. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to try to understand this uh, X tilde, which is uh, a quasi del test because it's rational, but the degree is uh, higher. And, uh, and also this uh, raises is also an interesting question because if you can construct a quasi-LG model for this, do we see a relation between uh, the mirror of the resolution and the mirror of X to the stack that I just talked before? Well, I do know the monodromy already because of this hypergeometric uh, kind of technique. So that's nice in this case. I don't think that for a moment. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, so now I'm gonna describe how x tilde looks like. So for this, I need the, you to remember uh, the weights and the degree in that because I need to understand what my singularities are. And uh, the equation of X, uh, if you write the possible monomial, will look like uh, something like that. So if I call the variable over there, I call them X, Y1, Y2, and Z for the weighted projective space. I can have uh, monomials of this type. So the first variable to this power, then I can have a four tick in the second variable, and then I can have uh, this, from this product, and then I can have uh... So this is all I can get. And by looking at this polynomial, you realize uh, that uh, the, the point, uh, which is the origin of the log chart, so the point uh, 0, 0, 0, 001 uh, belongs to X and in X is a singularity of this type. So by combinatorics, this will give uh, a curve F, which is a minus 4K plus one curve. 
And also the line x equals z equals zero, which is singular in P, will intersect x in four points, pi, which in here are singularities of this type. So if you resolve that, you get the one minus three curve that I will denote by pi zero, and then k minus one curve that are minus two, and I denote with pik, where, sorry, pij, where j goes from one to k minus one. So I said that these are four points of this type. This is probably a bit confusing, so I'm, I'm gonna draw a picture. I said that we have a, a point P, which is singular and four other points. And actually we have lines connecting them because if you put X equals zero, you see that this is given by four lines in X and they connect this point. So now when I blow up the point P, I get a, a curve F, which is the one I'm mentioning here. And when you blow up each of these points, you get a minus three curve, which I want to color. No. And then you get the curve, which are minus two. But then you have the strict transform of those, which are minus one in here. And you have four objects like that. Okay, so this gives us the exceptional curves in there, but it doesn't tell us who X tilde is as a circuit. But uh, the theorem that we, we prove here is the following. So there exists a uh, more tau that goes from the minimal resolution to X prime, which is uh, a smooth del pezzo of uh, uh, degree two with uh, a generalized Ecker point. And moreover, if uh, this X tilde here was uh, the surface cut out by this polynomial that I brought here, this one is uh, the one cut out by the same polynomial where I now put uh, K equals zero. So if you put K equals zero in there, you find a quartiline P2111 and that's a delta of the group. Okay, uh, to draw this, uh, to make understand what I'm doing, uh, what I'm saying in this theorem is that if you start from here and you contract this uh, four minus one curves, you do get the same picture where the curves above becomes minus one curve. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this curve that was a uh, minus four K plus one becomes a uh, minus four K plus one plus four, right? And you can do that K times until you get to a picture where you only have F and the PI is zero, that now becomes minus two curve. And F is now a minus one curve. But then you can contract this curve again and you get to a picture like that, where these curves are minus one and they meet in a single point. And I'm saying that this is a del pezzo of degree two and is actually the del pezzo of degree two cut out by the same polynomial where I put h equals zero. Okay. So this is good from our goal because uh, not only now we know that that tilde is rational, but we know that is a, a blow up a bunch of times of a del pezzo of degree two. So for a del pezzo of uh, degree two, we have exceptional collection made by 10 objects. And in this way, we can construct uh, explicitly through these blocks and all of the formula, an exceptional collection for this category. And so combining these pieces that are described combinatorially, we do get an exceptional collection for the whole stack. And if you sum up the numbers, you realize that for every case made by this number of objects. Uh, is this okay or questions before I raise? Also, let me observe that uh, these four curves that I drew here, I said that they are 
the divisor x equals zero in the circuit. And so at sub since the variable x as weight two, they are not an element of minus k, but they are an element of minus two k of x. And also when we blow them up, we obtain uh, uh, all three of terms. So a question that is naturally is, uh, can, uh, can this replace the anti-canonical uh, uh, effective divisor that I usually have in the, in the mirror symmetry picture? So I have five minutes, right? A bit more. Fine. Okay. Okay, so in the last minute that I have, I want to say something about uh, how to approach the A type, uh, given the fact that we still don't really know. So for this case, I said that what is uh, studied in the literature is this category, uh, which uh, is constructed for electric vibration. So one uh, needs to have only nodes in the fiber for curves. And then I need to choose a reference fiber and then uh, some path in the base and move to the crystal value. So I will have vanishing cycles. They will be the object of the category. And then I need the uh, uh, flur homology to come to the motif in there. Uh, so the problem is in this case is that the mirror that I constructed is uh, indeed something where this point here is uh, singular in the surface. This fiber is a cut and then I have a node over my C base. So the, what, uh, the philosophy that was suggested to us was to start from this, uh, this LG model and actually uh, deform it to uh, a lapsed vibration through a process that I think is called in general multiplication. Um, and then once I have this, I can actually consider the associated category of Lagrangian vanishing cycle, which now, since I do have a description of the other side, I can compare with the derived category of coherence of the stuff. Okay, so uh, in practice, since my uh, Y was given by something of this form with uh, just the projection to, to T, we know that the point E is critical when, uh, in this case, when uh, this uh, delta is multiple groups. And in particular, the fiber will, will be bad more than nodal when uh, these are the roots of multiplicity bigger than one. So a way to, a naive way to lexify this is to construct Y tilde uh, by a new polynomial delta, where now this uh, delta defines a, uh, uh, let's say, n to one cover, I did, I'm not saying to you that, of the plane T with the uh, ramification point of multiplicity at most two. Because now if I do use this new polynomial delta tilde, then this one will be a lapsed vibration. But uh, if one does that uh, in a naive way by adding the small epsilon term to the original polynomial, what we get here, in here we did the, in the original vibration, uh, the discriminant was something like t to the 18k plus nine plus 
times the, the nodal value that I had here. And here I do obtain uh, separable polynomials of degree uh, 18k plus 10. While from my previous exception collection, I expected 12k plus 10 critical values because each of them would create a vanishing point. What we do observe in this picture is though that these 18k uh, plus 10 values split in 6k that are very close to the origin plus 12k plus 10, which are distinct. So one could wonder if the right category to consider here is this category, but we don't have an equivalent, but just an embedding of one. And what we're doing at the moment is actually to go back to the case k equals zero, which uh, would give uh, just this surface. And for this surface here, uh, these, uh, as I was saying, these are the tests of degree two. So we have many mirrors. We have uh, the homological mirror given by Oru, Kazarto, and Orlo. We have uh, the rational elliptic surface that one gets from the Laurent polynomial of the FANO program. And then we do have uh, uh, the mirror that I constructed for the case k equals zero. And I'm trying to compare uh, the three of them because here we have a categorical statement and here we have a period statement and we want to show that they are the same. And uh, yeah, and potentially this would give some intuition on the right side. I guess I can stop. Questions for speaker? Do you have a guess as to the meaning of uh, the 6K? There? No, I have no idea why 6K is, an, especially 6 is a number that was not coming from any pieces of the decomposition. Right. So it's really weird. Yeah, because what I was hinting at earlier was just that given that you have the exceptional collection, by considering automorphisms of the bounded derived category coming from usual functorial operations, tensoring, yeah. whatever the usual stuff, Corey Mackay, you can get predictions on monogram either on the other side, but it shouldn't just be the three, right? You should be getting more matrices coming out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then you could sort of tease out using the structure of those matrices yeah, yeah, the yeah. connection to this. Yeah, yeah. And also like in this case, like you have a factor I this is very worked out with the matrix factorization at infinity. So that's like yeah, but I would be I would be bolder. I would just I would yeah. just take take what you've got, the theorem you've already proved, work out the matrices and then try to struggle with your directly with your 18k plus 10. Yeah, yeah. I did work out the matrix, but yeah. No, I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. More questions. Right. Online, any questions? All right. Let's thank Julia. Thank you.